Now, where do you find people that view themselves as good, upright, and righteous? You find them in church. Where else would you find them? Okay. And you know, I, I begin to realize this. You know, the reason you sit there and don't respond to this program is because you view, you're a religious person. You don't view yourself as a sinner. And God's not interested in religious people. I'm not interested in religious people. So you might as well turn the channel and watch Benny Hinn or whatever, the Sunday morning comedy hour. You can get on the merry-go-round of churchianity, get, get your religion, whatever. But you know, it, it, it's, it's the kind of people that God is attracted to, is the sinner. So what does it take to begin a relationship with God? Well, here it is. Here's the million dollar question. I'm gonna answer it right now. What does it take to begin a relationship with God? It takes a clash of wills. Well, now what am I talking about when I say a clash of wills? It's when you come up against the authority of the Word of God and you don't wanna do it. Okay, that's what it takes. God says, do this, and you say, I don't wanna do that. That's what it takes to begin a relationship with God, a clash of wills. If you don't have a clash of wills going on, in your, going on in your life, chances are you don't even have a relationship with God. Let's notice Jesus' clash of wills here. Mark 14 and verse 36. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Now, this is an incredible, uh, Jesus didn't want to go through this. He didn't want to go through the suffering, the pain and the suffering, death, death for our sins. I mean, this was a clash of wills. And he goes to the Father and he says, Father, work it out some other way. I don't want to go through this. And he comes to, the, comes to this point three times. He says this same prayer, Father, if there's some other way, if there's another way we can work this out, let's do it another way. And Jesus had to face his clash of wills. He had to deal with it. He had to deal, there, there was no other way. He had to deal with his clash of wills, the thing he didn't want to do. <clears throat> now for us, it's, I don't want to deal with this sin. I don't want to deal with this addiction. I don't want to deal with this behavior pattern in my life. I don't want to deal with my anger. I don't want to deal with the lust of the flesh I got going on in my life. Listen, are you a sinner? You got problems? You got things in your life that you know displeases God. Well, thank God. Thank God for those things. God may just be working with you. Because Jesus said, they that, be, that are whole have no need a, of a physician, but they that are sick. And I have come not to call the righteous, not to call the religious, but the sinner to repentance. Now your clash of wills is found in a three letter word. It's called sin. Sin, that's where your clash of will, wills is at. First John 3, 4 says this, Whosoever commits sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So what you've got to do is you've got to take the Ten Commandments and you've got to say, okay, how many of these things do I have a problem with? Where is my clash of wills? Now chances are it's not all of them. Most of the commandments you probably are able to keep. But there's going to be one, maybe two, that you really struggle with, that really gives you a fit. And there's things in there that you don't want to do. I don't want to do this, Lord. I know you say it's the right thing, but I don't want to do it. That's a clash of wills. But that's one of the ways you know God's working with you. This is the kind of people that Jesus is attracted to. The ones who actually have, the sick ones, okay? The sick, the sick ones, the ones that need healing.